and welcome back to Revelstoke. We're here on the Dark Horse course today. The girls are just over there getting kitted up, gonna head out for the first couple of hits. And usually when you see a course like this on TV, looks kind of small. You're wondering like, what's the big deal? But can confirm this stuff behind me is huge. So we got some stats on the course. We're gonna show you just how big these jumps are because we need to put into perspective how massive these girls are sending it. This is the very first feature on the course. It is a massive step down. Don't need a lot of speed for it though. Even though it looks huge, you absolutely just roll in with like a pedal stroke, maximum two pedal strokes, because all you need to do is fall out of the sky. Just to put it into context, this drop is 14 feet down and 17 feet out. And you know, I don't remember the A squared plus B squared equals C squared numbers, but we're looking at about 16 feet from knuckle to knuckle. And if you come in this one a little bit hot, it's not unlikely that the girls are gonna go 20 feet out and it kind of sucks your speed out of that berm there. This course was designed and pretty much hand-built by Corbin self. He had an idea, he had a vision, and he brought it to life. So even he admitted himself after this dropping got built, it was a little bit bigger and a little more intimidating than anyone kind of anticipated. So the girls took a lot of time to make sure they were comfortable on this feature because really it's all trail speed from here. There's no pedaling needed. You just gotta ride it, pump, and trust the hang time. There's a lot of hang time to be had. So we're here at the second feature on course. This is the biggest feature in the whole line. There are four total. Feature number two here, the inspiration came from Casey, the whip off queen. She basically wanted to jump out on course that mimicked some of the world's best whip off jumps. And I think she did pretty good on this one. I've already seen a couple of girls take hands off the bars, feet off the pedals. So come finals day, I'm really expecting to see this to be the big highlight jump. Everyone's gonna be pulling their best tricks. Just to give you some numbers at home, this lip here behind me is nine and a half feet tall. So it's about as tall as a one story house and 32 feet knuckle to knuckle. And this is a true gap jump. This is not a filled in table. There's no coming up short here, no mistake. So it's full commitment. You're coming through this thing with a ton of speed and you gotta be comfortable with all that hang time. We've made it here to the third feature on course, this little step down. And by little, I mean, this is definitely not small. This is a 22 foot gap knuckle to knuckle, and most of the girls, by the time they get here, they're actually carrying a lot of speed. They might actually overshoot it. As the riders clear the second jump on course, trusting their trail speed, it's actually gonna be rolling a little bit faster today as the things dry out. But this is kind of their chance to just catch their breath, absorb this nice, beautifully built step down, because right after this, we've got the last feature on course. We've made it to the final hit. I personally have dubbed this one the sand castle. It's a huge pile of dirt and sand. This is the last feature on the course. So if any of the girls are holding out on any tricks, need to get some hands, some feet off the bars, then this is their final opportunity. Similar to that first feature, it's a 17 foot gap, knuckle to knuckle, but this time we're going up. And the lip on this thing, it's actually two feet taller than the lip on the first step up. So it's a lot of time in the air. It's a big, huge wall of dirt that the girls are riding up to. But hopefully by the time they've gotten here, they've cleared the first three jumps, they're feeling good, and they're ready to whip it out for the cameras. You've been hitting the first feature a couple times today. You look super good, Thank you. super comfy on the bike. I can see though, Michaela's working up the courage. She's trying to do the first step down for the first time. What do you think she's going through? I know the feeling too well. And sometimes when you look at a big feature, even if you can compare it to something similar that you have done before, it just sits there like a bad pill to swallow. Mm. Like it's just lingering. So the, the skill of 
trusting your pro like the process and knowing your body knows what to do you just have to shut your brain off that little bit extra it is so hard to do so i am with her 100 percent and sometimes all you need is just to follow for speed and your brain can shut off so i'm just trying to be the little bunny in front of her so she doesn't have to think about her own speed too much yeah Sender? Yeah, but not. Did it feel smooth on the landing? No. Oh, okay. Like my bad ankle like gave out and like <laughs> I was like, eh. and I was like, okay, well, that's the maximum speed I want to go. Right. <laughs> Another one of the younger riders out on course, Lily, you're only 17? Yeah. <laughs> and how long have you been mountain biking? Like four years, I think, ish. Yeah, where are you from? Squamish. Nice, so four yeah. years in Squamish. Yeah. You're pretty hyped, you're obviously a I'm good very rider. Hyped. Thank you. <laughs> this course though, probably way different than what you're used to riding. Yeah, it's definitely different, but it's like the funnest jumps I've ever hit in my life. And do you find like the mental kind of battle here being a bit different than like a downhill race, what you're used yeah. to? Yeah. Yeah. How's that it's work? Different. Well, I find for racing, it's like you have to like try your hardest in this one run, and this you can just like ease into it and like, yeah, yeah. just like if you commit, then you're good. Yeah, and that's kind of. I don't feel pressure. Like just ride when I'm comfortable. And, yeah. Yeah. That's the coolest thing about this event that I've seen personally is that. Yeah, there's no no egos, there's no, no pressure yeah. at yeah. all. It's just like, yeah, you go out, do whatever you want. If you're a little mm -hmm. tired, take a seat. Uh, yeah, it's definitely takes some courage. I mean, the drop was really, um, I think it was kind of an okay jump for me, I guess. And the jump after was kind of like very intimidating for me. And following Georgia in was just like the best way to do it for me. I'm super stoked. But now you're dropping in all by yourself. You don't yeah. need a toe in. You don't need to hold that draft. Yeah. Feels good. I feel really good right now. Right. How does this compare though to kind of your style of riding, Natasha? You do a lot of skate park, dirt jumps, indoor stuff, and downhill racing, but what do you think of Dark Horse? Oh, well, it's a lot bigger. The bike's a lot bigger to trick and it's pretty hard. It's like a lot harder when you mess up to get back in the right position. But other than that, it's just been super fun to go higher and like longer and get so much more air than on a dirt jumper. It was an awesome time out on the course here today. The girls were soaring. The vibes were super high. Everyone was just stoked to lift each other up, offering toe-ins here and there, words of encouragement. It's a beautiful thing. We love to see it. I hope you viewers at home can appreciate now just how big this course is and how amazing these female riders are. And big ups to Casey Brown for pulling us all together, getting us here to ride this amazing event. Hope you enjoyed the video today and make sure to subscribe to the channel because we are definitely gonna have a sick highlight reel coming at the end of the week once we do our final session.